The history of Russian railways includes events that appear to be created for the cinema, compelling, unforeseen, and historically significant. Among these stories, one stands out with exceptional clarity. How a single British locomotive, the HS-4000 Kestrel, laid the conceptual foundation for one of the Soviet Union's most successful diesel-electric passenger locomotives, the TEP-70, and ultimately the modern Russian TEP-70BS. This is not a narrative of espionage or Cold War drama, but of direct engineering exchange, an example of practical technology quietly crossing the Iron Curtain and influencing Soviet locomotive development for decades. Britain was rapidly transitioning from steam locomotives to a fully dieselized railway network. Hawker Siddeley, an industrial conglomerate well known for the Harrier jump jet and the Hawk trainer aircraft, sought to bring its advanced engineering expertise into the railway sector through its subsidiary, Brush Traction. They envisioned a next generation locomotive more advanced than anything previously built in the United Kingdom. The result was the HS-4000 Kestrel, a streamlined, modern, high-performance diesel locomotive rated at 4,000 horsepower. In the mid 1960 20th of January 1968, it was promoted as the most powerful single-engine diesel locomotive in the world. Since Britain did not possess a domestic diesel engine capable of producing 4,000 horsepower, the designers installed the Sulzer 16 LVA24, a Swiss-built V16 engine recognized for high output and compact dimensions. The locomotive was intended for high-speed express passenger service and heavy freight operations with an expected top speed of 200 kilometers per hour, which is approximately 124 miles per hour. However, early testing revealed a significant flaw. The locomotive's weight had grown during construction reaching almost 133 tons instead of the expected 126 to 127 tons. This raised the axle load to 22 tons, slightly above permissible limits for British tracks. Despite the weight issue, the HS4000 delivered remarkable performance. In 1968, it hauled a record 5,220-ton coal train, demonstrating exceptional traction and a strong powertrain. Across more than two years of testing, it accumulated around 138,000 kilometers, or approximately 85,000 miles, and underwent a major engine overhaul to remain suitable for evaluation. British Railways, however, was adopting a more cautious position. After several infrastructure incidents, authorities became increasingly concerned about rising axle loads, they tightened requirements, stating that new locomotives must stay below 20 tons per axle and operate at reduced maximum speeds. The HS4000 could not meet these new standards. Officially, British Rail declined mass production due to axle load and infrastructure concerns. Economic factors, shifting priorities, and internal politics also played a role. The prototype, once a symbol of British engineering ambition, was gradually sidelined. Engineers began showing it to foreign delegations, subtly signaling that the locomotive was available for purchase. In 1971, the developers finally found a buyer, the Soviet Union. There was no espionage, no covert operation, and no dramatic seizure of technology. The Soviet Foreign Trade Organization, Mashino Import, bought the locomotive for 127,000 British pounds, equal to 274,320 Soviet rubles at the official exchange rate. The locomotive was shipped aboard the Soviet cargo vessel, Krasnokamsk. On the 8th of June, 1971, the HS-4000 arrived in Leningrad. For the first time, a high-powered Western diesel locomotive entered Soviet territory not as a trophy, but as an object for technical study. The Soviet authorities had no intention of using the HS-4000 in regular service. They wanted to test it, disassemble it, analyze its engine and control systems, and study its performance on broad-gauge track. For a nation dedicated to modernizing its passenger locomotive fleet, 
this machine offered a rare opportunity. After arrival, the locomotive was sent to the Ministry of Railways test facility at Sherbinka, the famous rail proving ground near Moscow. Throughout 1972, it underwent extensive scientific testing. Soviet engineers examined engine behavior, traction properties, bogey design, cooling systems, and electrical transmission components. It was then transferred to the Kolomna Locomotive Works, the USSR's primary producer of mainline diesel locomotives. There, mechanics completely disassembled it. The Sulzer 16 LVA24 engine was removed and tested separately. Every major component, alternator, traction motors, and control electronics, was studied in detail. This was not plagiarism. Direct copying was not possible due to differences in materials, manufacturing methods, and standard component bases. Instead, Kolomna retained the core ideas from the HS4000, high-power single-engine layout, high-speed bogey dynamics, traction system configuration, and compact engine integration. This knowledge was quickly applied to Kolomna's new project, a high-speed, single-engine passenger locomotive for the Soviet network. In 1973, Kolomna unveiled the first prototype of the TEP-70. This locomotive represented a major advancement over earlier Soviet designs. Although not a clone of the HS-4000, the influence was unmistakable. The new locomotive used a 16-cylinder diesel engine producing roughly 4,000 horsepower. Its bogey arrangement incorporated lessons from the HS-4000's high-speed stability Engineers added improved suspension elements and optimized traction motor mounting. The control system philosophy also evolved, borrowing concepts demonstrated in the British prototype. One major Soviet innovation was structural. The TEP-70 used a strong welded frame with block section construction tailored for 1,520 mm broad gauge and harsh climates. It employed larger wheel diameters than earlier Soviet locomotives, improving running characteristics and reducing mechanical stress. By the late 1970s and 1980s, the TEP-70 had become the dominant locomotive for diesel passenger service across non-electrified Soviet regions. It combined power, durability, and ease of maintenance, operating from Arctic areas to Central Asian deserts. In the 21st century, Kolomna modernized the series, resulting in the TEP-70 BS, an extensively improved locomotive designed for higher reliability and automation. The letters BS honor Boris Salambakov, an important figure in Russian railway management. The locomotive retained the core concept, a single 4,000-horsepower diesel engine with electric transmission, but added major upgrades. Microprocessor control replaced older analog systems, improving diagnostics and reducing maintenance. Passenger power supply capacity increased to 600 kilowatts. Crew comfort improved through ergonomic cab design, better insulation, and enhanced safety systems. More than 350 TEP-70 BS locomotives have been built. Their combined service mileage exceeds 250 million kilometers, establishing them as among the most reliable diesel locomotives in Russia. In 2024 and 2025, Kolomna added features such as automatic engine start and compatibility with push-pull regional train configurations. Today, the HS4000 no longer exists. After testing, it was left outdoors at Kolomna and deteriorated. During the difficult 1990s, no museum preserved it, and it was eventually scrapped. Yet its legacy remains immense. Without the HS-4000, Soviet development of a modern high-power passenger diesel locomotive would likely have been slower and more conservative. The Kestrel introduced new ideas, high-speed bogies, compact high-power engines, modern control concepts, and Western approaches to maximizing power density in a single-engine design. The Soviets adapted these lessons to their own engineering environment and created a distinct solution. The TEP-70, and later the TEP-70BS,
both of which continue operating across Russia's vast non-electrified regions. The HS-4000 no longer survives, but its spirit endures every time a TEP-70BS accelerates along the Russian railway network. If you think the video was informative, please like, subscribe, and share. Please also take membership of the channel to encourage us.